Hi, I'm Tiffany. Today, I'm going to show you how to add and subtract fractions. Adding and subtracting fractions. When adding and subtracting fractions, you want to remember to find the common denominator to your fraction, then add or subtract like normal. Let's look at example number one. Example number one. We already have common denominators for this example, so adding is going to be pretty easy. When adding fractions, all you do is add the numerators. 1 plus 5 is 6. Your denominators always stay the same. This answer can be simplified, so that means I can divide my numerator and denominator by something that is the same number. They're both even, so whenever your numerator and denominator are both even, that means 2 can always go into both of them. I'm going to divide by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And 14 divided by 2 is 7. There's nothing that can go into both 3 and 7, so 3 sevenths is my final answer. Let's move on to example number 2. Example number two. For this example, our denominators are not the same, so we need to make them the same before we can add. I'll show you a trick that always works when you need to get a common denominator. Whenever you multiply your two denominators together, that will always, always, always give you a common denominator. The only thing is, sometimes your denominator may be kind of large if you do that. It may not be the least common denominator, okay? But it will work. What will happen is you'll just have to simplify your answer at the end. So let's try multiplying our denominators together to get a common denominator. So I'm going to rewrite both of these numbers directly below, but with the denominator of 80. Now, the steps that I take to go from the 8 to the 10, what I did was multiply by 10. Remember, that's what we did. So if I multiply something on the bottom of my fraction, if I multiply the denominator by anything, I must multiply the numerator by the exact same number. That's the only way I'm going to keep the value the same. I talk about this in my equivalent fractions video. If you are not so sure of how to keep your fractions equivalent, you can check out that video and it will give you a better understanding. But 3 times 10 is going to be 30. And the same thing happens over here. We multiplied the 10 by 8 to get this 80. So I have to multiply my numerator also by 8. So 7 times 8 is 56. Now I can add. If you remember before, the denominator always stays the same. So I went ahead and wrote it in. Now I'm going to add my numerators. I have 30 plus 56. That's 86. Okay, we have a problem here, and that is my numerator is larger than my denominator. So to fix that, what I need to do is to divide my denominator into the numerator. That setup would look like this. When you subtract, you're going to get a remainder at the end. So, like, you're going to subtract and you would end up with a 6 down here. Now, I can do this in my head, and I think you probably can too. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make my whole number a 1, meaning 80 goes into 86 one time, and then there's 6 left over. You see, 86 is only 6 more than the 80, so the extra that you had left over comes here and the denominator remains the same. So that's the same thing that would have happened up here. Really I just did this step in my head. That would have been 80 going into 86 as 1. And that's 80 and when I subtract I get my 6. So this 6 is where the numerator came from. But I basically did this whole process in my head to get this. The only problem with this answer is the 6 and the 80 can be simplified. They're both even, so I know at least 2 can go in them. So I'm going to rewrite this answer as 1 
and I'm dividing the numerator and denominator by 2 and I get 3 over 40. Nothing can go into both 3 and 40 so 1 and 3 fortieths is my final answer. Let's move on to example number 3. Example number three, I have three sevenths plus 20 over 35. I need to get a common denominator. Sometimes when you're dealing with fractions, one of your fractions will already have a denominator that the other fraction can go into, meaning you may not have to change both fractions. In this case, seven can evenly go into 35, so I know that this fraction doesn't need to change. I've rewritten it right below. The reason it doesn't need to change is because I can make this other fraction over here have a denominator of 35. But I have to ask myself, what did I multiply the 7 by to get the 35? And the answer is 5. So I multiply the denominator by 5, so that means I must also multiply my numerator by 5. So 3 times 5 is 15. So now I can add. My denominators remain the same. 15 plus 20 is 35. We have the same number as our numerator and denominator. Whenever we have that, that always means that our answer is just plain old 1. So the final answer for example number 3 is 1. Let's move on to example number 4. Now we have subtraction. We still have the same rule. We still need to get common denominators. For this example, the 15 works as the denominator because 5 can go into 15. So this side I know is fine. I'm going to leave it alone and just rewrite it. I'm going to make this denominator a 15. Now I ask myself, how many times does 5 go into 15? It goes into it 3 times, so that means 5 times 3 is what gave me the 15. I need to multiply. 3 on the top as well. So 1 times 3 is what my numerator is made from. So 9 minus 3 is 6. Denominator remains the same. Is there a number that can go into both 6 and 15? Yes, that would be 3. So I'm simplifying now. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So my final answer to example number four is two-fifths. Example number five. I need to get a common denominator here. Um, we have a 30 and we have a 20. Many times when finding a common denominator, you're going to have to solve for the least common multiple. We use the least common multiple to become our denominator. If you're not familiar with how to find least common multiple, you can check out my least common multiple video goes into a whole lot of detail of how to do this I'm not going to use a lot of time explaining that concept um, because in general I'm assuming that you already know how to do it at this stage I'll just give a kind of brief overview of it you can basically list your multiples out I could write 30 then 60 then 90 and remember, multiples go on for a long time. So we could write these for a long time. So we're just going to pick a place and stop. I'm going to list now my multiples of 20. I have 20, 40, and 60. Now when we're finding the least common multiple, that means it's the first number that they have in common. So 60 is the first number that they have in common. So my new denominator is going to be 60. 20 times what gave me 60? 20 times 3. So that means I need to multiply my 8 by 3 also, and that gives me 24. I have to subtract here. 30 times what gives me 60? 30 times 2. So that means I multiply my 22 times 2 as well, and gives me 44.
Now 44 minus 24 is 20 and 60 remains the same. My zeros cross off and then I can simplify 2 6 and that becomes 1 3rd. My final answer for example number five is one third. That's my last example. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to click like, then head over to supereasymath.com for more math tutorials, printable video notes, worksheets, and more.